Well, so we're going to uh, begin talking about some, some of the different management strategies we have. So in terms of cultural controls, I know this is very important for horticultural aspects, from disease aspects. It's also important for uh, insect management aspects. You know, the proper plant uh, selection for the site. Now, one advantage that homeowners have that say a commercial grower would, would not have is they can modify the conditions in their site. They can, they can prune back limbs on trees to increase sunlight. They, they can have raised beds, you know, uh, to improve drainage and things like that. Uh, so uh, keep in mind that site modification falls well within this category. They need to see if there's resistant or tolerant varieties. If they've had recurring problems with the same types of pests or diseases, they need to be looking to see if there are either resistant or tolerant varieties. The resistant varieties mean are ones that the insect pests do not do well on. It, it slows down the population growth, it kills the insect pests, something like that. Tolerant ones are ones where the insects flourish just like they did on the, the non-tolerant variety. It just doesn't hurt the plant as much. So it, it, it tolerates uh, the damage. And so uh, uh, resistant and tolerant varieties are very, very important. And, the, and producers or uh, home gardeners may be making a decision. Do they lose some of the attributes they really want? With, with, with their favorite plants when, when they uh, select a resistant variety. But uh, it, it is a, a balancing act there. And they need to pay attention to their plants. You know, uh, proper nutrition, proper watering, that's all important. It helps uh, plants tolerate some of these insect uh, pests quite well. First thing I have, sanitation. I mean, uh, Dr. Pfeiffer said the same thing. Remove crop residues after harvest. Now, I don't mean wait until the end of the season. This is not waiting until the first frost has killed it anyway. As soon as a home gardener is done picking what they want from that plant, that plant needs to be removed, thrown into the trash. Because even though that plant may not have, you know, melons on it or cucumbers, the cucumber beetles are still feeding on it and, and they're, they're still laying eggs and they're still reproducing and they're getting into stages that they can survive the winter. So the sooner we can remove their food source, the better control we're going to have on their population. Pruning out galls. So when you see galls on plants, on, on your blackberries, on, on your grapes and things like that, remove those galls. That, that's a good way of, of, of uh, uh, controlling those, not, not having to spray for them. A lot of times the galls are not causing serious damage to the plant. Reduce the hiding places for insect pests. So uh, boards and, and old tires and trash in the garden, piles of weeds. Those are going to be harbor, harborages where insects can uh, hide during the day. A lot of these insects are active at night. During the day, they're hiding from the sun. So we want a clean garden, if, if at all possible. You know, remove dead limbs and wood. Uh, we get certain insects that will be uh, uh, reproducing inside those uh, dead limbs. Remove heavily infested uh, plants heavily diseased plants, it's very difficult to bring a heavily infested plant back to health and you're actually risking more keeping that in the garden and those problems moving on to some of the better plants. So when a, when a plant does become heavily infested, the best thing is to uh, cut your losses, pull out that plant and get, and get rid of it. Keep your garden weed free. So what Dr. Pfeiffer was saying about uh, plants harboring uh, inoculum for disease Diseases. They're also har harboring insects uh, that can move over uh, to the garden. Clean your tools regularly. So these are all just good management practices for home gardeners. Crop rotation. Crop rotation is very important, not only for disease management, but for insect management. And uh, we would like people to, to switch plant families. Uh, it, it helps with diseases. It also helps with insects that overwinter in the soil in immature stages. And I, I pick my words real carefully because uh, it, if they overwinter in the soil as an adult insect, 
Next spring they can get up and they can move very easily. It doesn't matter uh, you know, if you rotate or not, but when they're overwintering as eggs in the soil or as larvae, they're very limited how far they can move if you rotate that planting. So wireworms, white grubs, rootworms can be controlled with uh, uh, crop rotation. And again, uh, uh, it also helps with plant nutrition. Uh, timing. You know, commercial growers are often trying to hit a specific market window when they can get the most, uh, uh, the, the best price for their crop. You know, they're trying to hit that early melon window or, you know, when no one else has sweet corn, things like that. Home gardeners don't have that consideration. They should try and time their planting dates to avoid insect and disease problems. So adjusting those planting dates can be very helpful. And, and some good examples of that with sweet corn, early planting. So when we're past that, that, that frost period, go in with our plantings, we're gonna avoid the corn earworm problem considerably. Uh, so, you know, with, with uh, sweet corn, I recommend, if at all possible, planting before June 1st. You plant after June 15th, I can, probably tell you you're going to have every ear in your planting infested with corn earworm. Uh, vining crops, delay planting to avoid cucumber beetle problems. Cucumber beetles are transmitting bacterial wilt, so there's usually an overwintering generation comes out, you know, when you, you plant your cucurbits early, say May 15th, you know, they're going to have three weeks or more of heavy cucumber beetle pressure. But if you can delay some of those plantings to June, a lot of times you can uh, um, miss uh, at least the bulk of that, that pressure. Another one is, is uh, seed corn maggot. You know, a lot of people, they, they get those nice warm days in March and they decide it's time to uh, go out and, and, and plant seeds in the garden. Those seeds just sit there for weeks before they germinate, and that, that's food for seed corn maggots. They should delay plantings until you have the right soil temperatures for rapid germination and plant emergence, and that's the way to avoid that problem as well. Homeowners also have some other techniques that they can use, companion plantings. Uh, we had a study down at the South Farm this year looking at trap cropping for uh, stink bugs. And the idea was you, you're trying to, in, with a trap crop, you're trying to intercept the pest before it gets to the plot. Once it's in the, the crop, it's very difficult to get it out. But we, what we want to do is give it something it likes better than the crop and give that to them before they can get to the crop. And so uh, this summer we used uh, sunflowers and a couple species of millet around a pepper planting uh, to, to uh, try and reduce the numbers of stink bugs in, in a pepper plot. Uh, that turned out to be about 50% effective. So it, it cut the population in the plot by about 50%. And I think that's pretty typical with trap cropping. You're not going to get 100% control, but you're going to get a reduction in the pest population. Some other things are companion plants. Some people call these banker plants, that you're going to provide some plants that are very useful to natural enemies. And in this example, we had some research with uh, buckwheat. And buckwheat is a very small flower, very effective at providing the, the nutrients for adult parasitic wasps. They can get the, the, the uh, nectar and the pollen. It increases the number of eggs they can lay and also keeps them in, in, the, uh, in the right location. So you're giving them something that, that are keeping some of these beneficials right around the plants you want them to help out with. Cover cropping. Cover cropping is also very important. Again, not, not only for the, uh, the horticultural aspects of the cover crop and building the soil and things like that, helping to uh, suppress weeds, but you're also uh, help, helping to keep natural enemies there. You're increasing natural enemy populations. You're benefiting pollinators with, with the correct selection of a cover crop.